Previously on Grey's Anatomy, you saw us try to get some welding done on some aluminium that broke the welder that led us to a couple of trips into town to get some parts. Today we're doing a slightly different take on that. We're a Kiwi couple living in Australia who brought a 57 foot steel trawler after she sunk in a flood and was pulled from the sea. We're now bringing her back to life. She'll be crewed by supporters from around the world. Welcome aboard. Sometimes you have to work with the tools that you've got, and the tools that I've got is a TIG welder that will weld hard aluminium. Introducing hard aluminium. Uh, as you can see there, there's a title up there of what it is. We're gonna be building it out of that today. I found this remarkably accurate template uh, of soft aluminium, but uh, that's gonna work out really well if I just copy this shape. So I think we'll just do that and save a bit of time. Prior planning always speeds a job up. What I'm doing is basically just, I've got a couple of good welds along here as my starting point, and I've got that relatively straight, and then as I bend it around, I just make sure that we're not getting higher or lower with this piece of flat bar here, I just make sure we're not going up or down. Now I clamp it essentially right at the edge there, and it allows me to pull it around like that. So I can tack that bit there, bring this out a little bit further, and then tack it round. that's the easy way to make a hard aluminium radar mast lid. I'll go around now with the manual spool gun and uh, get that welded up, and we should be able to start fitting some of the accessories onto this plate. Top layer done. So pretty even welds, very easy to weld like that though because I'm not doing filler rod, I'm just basically melting the two metals. In fact, I'm mostly melting this metal here into the top metal. So last time we talked navigation lights, I made a couple of glaring errors. One, I can't do maths. And the second thing is I can't actually draw. And I was looking at the wrong information and giving you the wrong information. That was kindly pointed out by a number of people in the comments, but Ian Kelly, I'm gonna point you out because you sent a bloody awesome email you had all the details in there as to why I was wrong, and you backed it up with facts, which was really cool. You sent me to a website. I've got a link in the description below for that website if you're curious. It was awesome. It just set out all the different boat types, the different sizes of lights that apply, different light types, all that sort of stuff. So it was a really cool email. I was really chuffed to get that. Um, and you were incredibly apologetic and lovely on the email too. So awesome, awesome. Loved getting that. It was great. Now, now that I know what I'm talking about, because I've read Ian's email, um, I'm going to go through and start working on the nav lights for Brewpeg. If you imagine that this is the top of the radar mast, radar mast bolts on up here, and it's sort of like a big clear space at the back. I assumed that I could put a single round 360 degree light uh, on the top here and it would double as the anchor light as well as the steaming and stern light. 
I can't do that because of brew peg size. That would have worked if brew peg was under 12 meters, but we're 17 meters, so therefore we have to do a slightly different light layout. So what I need to do is create two lights. I need a, a little stalk with a light on top that is 360 degrees and white. That's gonna be our anchor light. I need to also then create the second light, which is gonna be a steaming light. So that's a white light that faces out the front of the boat and it has an arc of 225 degrees. So you can't see it from behind the boat, but you can definitely see it in front and off to the side sort of thing on either side. So let's get that in. Obviously the first place to start is mounting Starlink. I'm not using the square by the way, is because some of the welds are daggy and hanging over the side. So they're, um, they'll, they'll ruin it. I try and use that line. What I need to do to mount Starlink, it's going at the back end here, and I actually thought the easiest way was get a piece of stainless, I'll clean, I mean, sorry, hard aluminium, I'll clean this up, obviously to get rid of some of the rusty aluminium on it. And then I was thinking of sinking it in, like so, uh, on the center line, so the, the back spline here would be, you know, lined up with the center line here. Sink that in, but actually mount it sort of down like that so it sticks below and above and then just put some big T-clamps uh, on this and actually clamp onto the Starlink bracket. These welds are a bit goodness me, but they're going to be ground off mostly, so that won't matter. What I was wanting to do, lovely, as well as on the inside, so I'm happy with those. They've come up all right. What I do plan to do is put some bracing in this here, so I want this really, really strong. This is 5mm, so it's still pretty stiff, this hard aluminium. Um, and this side here is going to be braced as well, so that's step one. Gonna hold off on gussets on this. I think that's probably gonna be okay because we've got it tied into this upright as well as the five mil plate on an ang on two angles, you know, and welded top and bottom double continuous. So see how we go. Um, if we need to add more, I can always add it later, but I want to basically allow room for the hose clamps top and bottom. What I'm going to do now is start focusing on the lights. These are the lights that we're using. So one of these is an anchor light and I have a second one that will be a steaming light. At the moment, they're both 360 degree light so there's no no shade anywhere in them they basically you can see them from any angle i need to make a shade so you can't see this steaming light from the back of the boat so simple way of doing that using some exhaust pipe this is a piece of stainless exhaust pipe that came off the exhaust upgrade we did on brew pig i'm gonna cut a base out of this stuff here and then i'm gonna come up however high we want to go slice the front off and then use this curve to be the shade around the back of the steaming light little by little piece by piece Take back what's been stolen from me Little by little, piece by piece Until I'm complete Sadly, our drill press has passed away. It's had a good life, but it's gone to a better place. I'd like to introduce our new vertical mill. We got it for a steal from one careful lady owner. on you and you got no clue what I'm supposed to do I can't help my
I don't think the old owner realised how good a mill this was when she got rid of it. One milled piece of stainless aluminium. I've only just noticed the new mill has a built-in water lubrication feature. That's awesome. I didn't even know about that. Two identical discs have now been machined. Obviously one is slightly different than the other, but that, that's fine. It's all within tolerance. It's a new day and I've had the weather gods give my workbench a, a wash. It's um, really handy when that happens. It was getting a bit dirty, so nice to give it a clean every now and again with well, you know, nature. For the lights, I'm gonna mount them on a pole. I found this stuff here. I think it's, I don't know, inch and a quarter diameter. It's relatively thin, but that's okay. It doesn't have to support a lot of weight. And I want it to be quite light up the top. I'm gonna to cut it this long strategically because that's as far as I can go before I start curving. I don't, don't want it to curve. I would draw this design out, but the weather gods have also washed my, um, my CAD uh, program. So yeah, that's not really gonna work. So I'm just gonna wing this. I know, unheard of. I was surprised too. So using a one mil cutoff disc, cut the pipe in two, then swap over to the flapper disc, clean up the ends so there's no burrs, and then make sure that all the welding area is nice and clean. And then it's time to align them onto the discs, ready to weld, tack them together, and then it's time to weld them out properly. These are my component parts. So this is our light disassembled. So it's an LED base with a like a clear light, reflective top, etc. Um, this is exactly the same for these two lights. So this one goes up the top and it's going to be an anchor light. And then this one here goes down the bottom and it's going to be a steaming light. The steaming light has this piece of stainless that gets welded over top like that. And it gets cut down here and sort of over this side here roughly. Um, and that allows no light out the back and then a 225 degree arc out the front. And I will polish the inside up so that it's nice and shiny. But one thing I have just noticed, if you have a look in there, you can see there's an arrow just on that side there, there's an arrow pointing forward. So if I mount that down like that, that's basically pointing forward. That's where the cabling comes out, so off to the side. So over here somewhere. What I need to do is basically waterproof that. So this is going to be bonded down, bolted and bonded. So I don't want any water getting anywhere near any of the cabling and stuff or the light fitting and so on. Um, but I need to basically make a waterproof channel going from wherever this cable goes here over and into this pipe here. I have to do exactly the same on this one, but they're not going to be symmetrical, which is going to be slightly agitating to me and my brain when I'm just sitting there thinking about absolutely nothing on a random Tuesday afternoon. I need to make a pipe that goes on that angle here. When I put it up here, it's 45 degrees. So it's going to look a little bit asymmetric, but it'll be awesome when I'm finished. Well, at least that's what I'm telling myself. Right, so drilled five mil. So we've got the four bolt holes and we've got one eight mil over here. Countersunk them all so they're nice and smooth. That lines up like that. I'm just gonna run bolts and nuts through these. There is a strong argument to drill and tap this. It's stainless. So there's also another argument to consider. This one here. <laughs> right, these are the four bolt holes for the lights. I've done a bit of a crisscross. That hole's obviously off to the side, but that's almost irrelevant. I'm going to use that sort of edge of the hole there as my central point. Now this anglometer is set at 225 degrees. So if I pop that about there, roughly that, that angle there is roughly where that thing is. So I'm just going to measure out here to make sure I've got this even, draw those lines out, and then I need to make the stainless to suit whatever's left over at the back here. Bit of a faffing around, but that's looking down on it vertically. So you can see you've central crisscross there, and then you've got your um, arc over the back here. So the light shines around this front area here. So Time to knock up a stainless shield for this back. We've got our quadrant. We've got the stainless pipe on top. I've brought it out here, and I, that's my mark for the quadrant on this corner. Draw a line up there. Over this side, you've got the same deal here. So let's cut this out, and that's going to become our shield once it's nice and polished up. Do 
there you go, look at that beautiful weld. There's no crappy welds on this at all. No, that's not true, actually, I'll show you them. As you can see, that one there's a wee bit average. Oh, and I blew through just there, but we'll clean that up with a grinder and then, then we'll have a good look at it once we've done that. I've given them a clean up. Two of them, one just there, one just there. On the inside, they are a wee bit daggy, but that's never coming off. And this is just a shade to stop light from going out the back. So, you know, I think it'll last. The next step is I need to get a cable from this hole here into this tube but I don't want it to be exposed and have a cable gland out here or anything like that. I want some stainless pipe doing that and I'm going to make exactly the same up the top here somewhere. So next step is to cover that up with a nice piece of curved pipe. Thankfully I found a piece of pipe at the scrappy that'll do it. Just a random bit of bent stainless but I need 85mm which is there. Obviously it doesn't have to be that precise hence the free-handed nature of this. Because we've got cable going through this, it has to be as clean as possible. Now, this edge isn't actually as important as you think. Because we've cleaned these up really nicely on both ends, the cable can pass through really, really nice and sweet. This here is going to be pushed in sort of a little bit deeper, so the cable itself is never actually going to get anywhere near this. So by keeping this really nice, it's rounded on both the top and the inside edge so for any cables going past it, and then sitting it in there like so, down there, notching it in, and then that goes up there like so. That'll work out all right. It's a fraction too short, but I reckon we'll be able to live with that. So the bottom's welded on. This came up quite nice. Happy with those welds. Had to do a slight change on the top didn't quite fit so because it was so tight to this main body the hole was so tight to this main body I had to basically scallop out this whole thing and then push it in sideways so this tube comes in goes in about maybe five mil I'll say almost quarter an inch just so that there's a nice clean run for the cabling to go down it could just be pushed straight down and it'll just get you know guided straight down uh, right now that that's done time to stick it onto this lid Well, that's a bit more of a gap than I was hoping. Because I want this top to be removable but waterproof, this is the inside of one of our uh, fuel rubber gaskets. So it's essentially it's scrap, um, but it's perfect for this. So this is the shape that's on the top of the, uh, the radar mast. So we have six bolts holding it on, and then I'm gonna do a nice wide inside so we can get cables, hands, whatever, down there. Doesn't matter if it sticks out slightly on the inside, it's not gonna affect anything. And in fact, same deal on the outside here, it doesn't matter if it sticks out slightly because it's gonna be underneath the stainless cover. By stainless, I mean hard aluminium. Normally I'd say cut this with scissors, but I don't have any that are strong enough, so we're gonna have a go with side cutters. Okay, slow but effective. Is a gasket that I've just made. Thankfully the camera stopped recording so it missed all of the good bits. But when you're using a punch set like this, in order to keep the ends of them nice and sharp, get a piece of hardwood if you can and punch down into the end grain. So you want your gasket up here like that and if you're gonna be bopping a hole in it like so, you basically punch down straight through and you can see here, they, it does sort of stick down into the hardwood quite a bit when you punch down, um, if you give it a good whack. Uh, but because you're going into the end grain, it doesn't actually damage the punch and the punch will stay you know, sharper for much longer. It will blunt it over time, but you're gonna get a heck of a lot longer out of it than if you go like even just into the side grain of the wood or even into like a piece of plywood or something like that, it'll, it'll damage it more so than hardwood end grain. I have to align this by eye, so it's pretty difficult. So these are not in any specific pattern. Um, I just drilled them randomly because it made a lot of sense when I built the mast. But what I'm thinking is rather than the bolts are 8mm bolts, and these gasket holes are 10mm, 
and uh, I need to I need to probably adjust this so I'm going to do these holes at 12 mil um, and then put washers on the top there's going to be a big old gasket underneath them so it'll seal up fine but yeah I think that'll work So the problem I have here is the hole is too big for the pipe, there's a lot of slop, so the fit up isn't great, therefore the weld potentially can be rubbish. So one trick that I've learned over the years to do is add three little blobs of, in this case, filler wire, and then I push the pipe through those blobs so it sort of holds it tight, and then it just makes it much easier to bridge the gap. Um, it gives you three bridges to start with, but it makes it much easier to then start filling the gap up and weave your way around. Simple trick if you've got rubbish fit up. I feel like I need to add something else and I have this thing here and it's far too shiny and new looking so I'm going to chop it in half. Mystery stalk that I've been working on is actually a VHF aerial uh, extension so it's a wee bit warm so I'm not going to hold it too long but it basically sits there and you can sort of see it lifts it quite a bit taller than that light but it pushes our uh, VHF aerial as high as we can physically get it on Brewpeg. My understanding is radios, VHF in particular, is line of sight. So if you've got an aerial quite low down, you're going to struggle to get a lot of range. The higher you can put it up in the air, the better the range. You can get taller aerials, but again, same thing. If they're still low down, you're still going to have problems transmitting for a decent direction. We've got a two and a half metre aerial, but we want to stick it up as high as we can get. I think we'll be about six to eight metres off the waterline by doing it this way. Hey there. Damn it, gotta to go to a meeting. Yes, that's right, even though I don't have a job as such, I still have meetings. So we're right now organizing a whole bunch of IT stuff whilst the welding is happening. So let's jump into that. 
Hey gun, you actually here? A GPS had to come off. So this is um, was temporarily just dangling up the top just so that we could get some some data, some numbers and data coming through. But it's in the way of the new mount, so I need to actually build something to mount this properly. So quick little job for this morning and then we'll get into mounting this lid. So that's what the mount came up like for the uh, GPS. Nice and smooth on the inside. That's why I wanted to just nuke it on the inside and round it all off and then continuous weld right the way around. Um, that's gonna be more than strong enough given that the base of it holds on with four four millimeter screws. Um, if it's coming off, these are breaking, but they're gonna rip out of the plastic before that ever leaves the boat. So plenty good enough. I'll get that in and then we'll get uh, started on to getting this lid put on the top. Right, as I've mentioned a while ago, when I built this radar mast, I stuck these ports in. And these ports are three quarter inch stainless, which allows me to just make little fittings like this and then screw on whatever it is that we need. It's tight enough. Probably should do it tighter, but I don't think that's ever coming off. Right, start feeding the cabling down through. Change of plan, taking it off because sometimes it can be a bit of a mission getting cabling down this mast. I probably should have made it easier, but I didn't. So I worked with what I got. What I need to do, please bend. I don't know if that's gonna bend enough. It's going down and kind of just jamming. So what I'm thinking, I might be able to just jiggle it around. Maybe, also maybe not. Oh yeah, there we go. The idea worked. And then what I found is it's pretty easy to get it to this point because the cable is relatively stiff. And then as I get it, I can actually just pull it along with my fingernails. I know that sounds painful and it is painful. It takes a long time, but I never change stuff up here. So I'm, you know, it's not really the end of the world. If I was doing it again, I probably would have made bolt on end caps and then I could have easily just taken them off, pushed something all the way down just to get stuff out. But it's all good. There it goes. And then if you roll the wire left to right, or clockwise, anti-clockwise, you can sort of roll it across the, the mast or the wing itself. So if, you, if it's tucked over the back, say, and you want to get it to the front so you can pull it along, just like roll it one particular way and you'll be able to see it. Why am I putting this on first, you might be asking. It's because I can't get this cable all the way down to the bottom of the mast with the lid on. Um, so I need to get this bit done first and then once, once we've got this in, then I can stick the lid on and we're good to go. Right, before I go much further, I have to wire this up or else I'm never going to get the cabling and so on in. So, I have the lights that we need. Are jammed tight. There we go. The bolts that we need to fasten them all down. These are LEDs. Uh, so, have very, very little current draw. They're 4 watts. 12 volt, 4 watts. Even though they're quite bright. Uh, so that's less than an amp at 12 volts and they, they can do 24 as well So if we really want to we can run it at 24 and halve the amps but uh, I think Actually, I can't remember if we're running these 12 or 24. It really doesn't matter for the wiring What I need to do is basically take these Cablings that they have coming out of them Connect them up to this. Uh, this is sold as three millimeter, but it's um, 1.13 millimeter squared per conductor Which is like more than enough uh, I think I did the maths on it earlier and um, it was less than 1% voltage drop so there's no way we're ever going to have a problem with that level of voltage drop. We do need to do some decent joins on these because I don't have a huge amount of real estate. I'm staggering the join. They don't give you a lot of wire to work with on these lights. While the width of the crimps themselves don't physically fit down that hole, should have known that but didn't think about it, I can bring them into the, um, into the light a bit without it being an issue. So. I've done that and then I've just got this cabling to basically feed down so it'll fit nicely in there. I can bolt that down and then I'll bolt the light fitting itself back in. This one will probably be more of a challenge, I'm guessing, to get down. 
Maybe not. Actually, belay that. I reckon this one will be a piece of cake. Now that I've reconsidered my initial position. Just about there, two lights installed, roughly wired up, we'll call it. Now I've got to do the VHF aerial, so I have to run this kit through it. So we've got a little mounting plastic brackety thing that has to go at the very top. That's why I kept this here, because it's a specific size. So we'll feed that down, um, and then we should be just about ready. Uh, Starlink, I have to wire Starlink as well. This is why I needed to keep that end because that plastic fits perfectly in the end of it like that and then the antenna just screws onto that. In fact, I'm going to put the antenna on now so that I don't have to try and do this on the tippy toes of me later to get the aerial on. The antenna that we ended up going with is from Pacific Aerials, um, a Kiwi company, but mainly it was over in stock uh, at the store across the road and it had pretty good reviews from a few people I spoke to online about it. Uh, it's a two and a half meter antenna and part of the reason why I wanted to put it as high as I could was because it wasn't a 16 foot commercial antenna um, however the fitting is exactly the same so later on if we do want to upgrade to a 16 foot we've got the base to mount that on next up is Starlink we need to mount this on the back of our new bracket you've got this original crisscross pattern brace frame thing that they come with a little push button here that you can click on there and it'll come out of the frame there you go and there's a locking mechanism in there but there's also a reduced diameter so it makes it easy to mount in that frame but the cool thing about it is it has a slot which means the cable can tuck down in there and be protected from the mount itself um, or you can pull it sort of out like that and mount it however you need to um, we're going to be using our angle brace at the back of the new radar mast frame and we're going to be putting some t-clamps to hold this area here uh, onto the mast in this area here so the clamps will go around this um, and then we'll have the cabling run over here, probably put a P-clamp in the middle here and the back of the mast tucks in here so I need to get a cable gland to go on the back of the mast a simple solution I think is probably just going to get a fitting and welded in around this area here and then screw the cable gland into the stainless fitting so feeding these cables down will need a mouse line so this, cable, this rope here is running right the way through into the wheelhouse so what I'll do is grab all three as one bundle uh, and just pull them through. The VHF aerial is shorter than the others, the other two, so I'm just going to take that so that it'll stay with the other two. It's not tight, um, there's a three inch uh, like hole at the other end basically, so um, and there's only a half dozen cables going through it, so there's plenty of room, so that's why we don't have to be too stupid wrapping this up. The next step is cleaning out the threads. These are M8 stainless nuts welded to a mild steel flange. I'm using stainless 316 bolts being stainless on stainless, so stainless bolt, stainless nut. Um, there's a chance that they'll gall up, so I want to make sure the threads are absolutely spot on, so running a tap down them is a great way to clean them up. You'll never guess this, but I've decided to put a two-piece rubber gasket on. Well, when I say two-piece, it's going to have a little slot cut in the back. I think that's a better design overall because it means that um, I can pretend like I meant to do it. Yeah, we'll go with that. I haven't cut it straight, I've done that so that when it does clamp up it's got something to try and squash everything to. Hopefully that's enough. Okay, moment of truth. The bolts are tapped. Time to see if we can get this thing up. Right, that's the front. The next thing to mount is Starlink, so stripping off the original ground mount, fitting it to our angle and then using two strong t stainless T-clamps. I'm not 100% certain if this is the mount arrangement that I'm going to keep. Um, it may change over time if I decide it needs to be stronger or you know different orientation. What I originally thought was that Starlink only operates in one axis, however, I didn't realise Starlink operates in two different axis. I thought it was just a simple left and right, but it can also rotate itself on its own mount. 
I want to build a fiberglass dome over top of the satellite receiver to protect it from the elements and that's going to complicate the design of that dome a little bit. Um, something to factor in, I'm sure it'll be easy enough to solve but it's just something that we didn't realise and in doing this while the Starlink was running it's kind of helped us solve it. I think that came up alright in the end. We've got anchor light, steaming light, Starlink, 4G antenna, AIS, GPS and a spare 4G antenna as well as our 2.5 metre VHF antenna mounted as high as we can get it on the boat.